made it. This is my favorite stretch of the Colorado River. To the north, Parker, Arizona. To the south, Blythe. And miles of beautiful crystal clear water in between, full of boats that look a lot like this one. This is gonna be a hell of a weekend. What party. We got a legend in our midst right now. Legendary Rogers Bonneville TR. This is my old boat. I told you guys about this boat. This is the boat that I was driving when I picked my future wife up off the banks of the Colorado River. Same boat I was floating down that river in a year later when I proposed to her and she said yes, it's my first drag boat. I love that it's still clean. Here's the new owners. Dan and Darren Schuler. She treating you good? Yeah, she runs great. How fast is it now with the big block? It's about 75. Nice. It went 116 miles an hour with a blown 572 Chevy. Low nines in the quarter, like this thing's a beast. Absolute beast. The perfect riverboat. I'm stoked to see it again. What kind of RPM does it turn now? Five. 75 miles an hour at five grand. Dude, that's legit. That other Rogers we have in Georgia right now with the LS motor, 5,000 RPM. like this. Look at the big box as far as the eye can see. Alright, you've seen the cove, you've seen some hot rod boats, epic day. This is how we end every epic day on the Colorado River. Somebody will come by and make some passes a little further away from the boat so we don't get sunk. Okay, little trip update here. We've had two epic days on the Colorado River so far, and then uh, the roof AC in the toter went out. <laughs> Figures, right? But uh, there's two AC units in the gooseneck, so... My buddy Randy, Joe Cole, came up with the bright idea of taking one AC out of the trailer and swapping it onto the, Hi, onto the, onto the toter. Say hello to YouTube, fellas. <laughs> and then, uh, so we're going to swap the AC units and then go boating again. Yes. Because uh, it's not hot right now. Now's we the time to, to do this. We want to make sure that uh, our superstar has cool air conditioning on his way home to Georgia. <laughs> Good looking out. <laughs> 
Do for life. Okay. You want me to hold the camera or hold the phone? No, you come hold the... Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh, he's got it. All right, I'm going to keep filming then. So uh, for those of you at home that were wondering, this thing works great for about three and a half minutes and then kicks the breaker in the trailer. So apparently it needs replacing. Um, I guess when we test drove it, we should have tried it for longer than three minutes. I don't know. I blame myself for this. I do. As always, when you buy used, you're buying someone else's problems. You better be ready for the adventure. I am. Oh, we're going faster now. It's definitely lighter. Look at that. Is that carbon fiber? What? Is that carbon fiber? You wish. Dude. <laughs> like I always say, rust is lighter than carbon. Oh, man. This phone is heavy, man. I'm telling you. So we're going to have one junk AC in here, but we still got another one in here. I don't. This trailer had two ACs. I have no idea why. But hey, did you want me to like put this on straight or you want me to put it sideways? Uh, you know, whatever has most style. Oh, sideways for sure. <laughs> Wait, no, whatever has the best arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get mileage here on the way home. It's 2,300 miles to Georgia, by the way, in case you guys were wondering. Hey, goodbye, goodbye YouTube world. Goodbye. Oh, it's dark. All right, we're not going to show you the rest of this because obviously it's probably going to be boring and who cares about, uh, you know, putting ACs in. So um, back to the fun on the water. So this right here is my favorite stretch of river. No houses, no campgrounds, no nothing. You can just float down it and see cool stuff like boats like that lining up to go drag race. Watch this. So that was my friend Randy and my friend Blaze. Looks like Blaze nozzle didn't get up, had a malfunction or he forgot to hit the button. So it was driving on the bow. Could have gone a lot faster. We'll see if they line up again and it goes differently. gas tank too, love. Yeah. I hope they like race fuel. That's all I got. That is hard on a boat, towing another boat right there. Up river. Yeah. Up and river. Like the river current is like seven or eight miles an hour right now. Let's stop this video real quick. And I need to ask you one more time. Can you hit the subscribe button for me? You probably forgot to do it. I know you want to right now, please. Thank you. On with the show. So it's our last day here on the Colorado River. And we just came to Fox's Resort in Parker to go watch the legendary Flat Nuts make some hits out there. This place is epic. It's a bar and grill right on the Colorado River. And it's uh, infamous for guys bringing out serious hardware and making hits. Not sure if I'm going to, because the water is really rough. But this right here is the exact kind of boat to go driving through rough water. Dave, is it on alcohol? No, it's gas. It's on gas? Yeah, it's, on, it's just built on AV gas. Nice. Dude, yeah. what does it make? Do you know? Uh, just right around a thousand. Oh man, yeah. this thing's a monster. Yeah. East Valley Performance did it out at Apache Junction. Dude, it is beautiful. It's a D stroke deal. And is it a Beezer or a Beesmeyer? It's a Beesmeyer. Nice. It's a 2007 Beesmeyer. It's days like these that make all the miles between Georgia and here worthwhile. Look at that monster. And that monster is about to go right out here with pontoon boats, stand-up jet skis, you name it, it's out here. But the best part about coming here is this floating bar called Foxes. Yeah, this is madness, dude. Well, right here it is. You cannot make passes out here. Unless you're in a circle boat like this. This is Monday. These people have jobs. Clearly not. I love them for that.
bring doubles out. No, no bueno. Oh my god. <laughs> I love your hat. I wore, you, this, you, I wore this just for the occasion. You depending. look amazing. <laughs> tell me about the fummins. Can you I call what? it that? What do you call it? You know what? I'm going to tell you about the river first. Tell me about the river. I've lived in Havasu 22 years. Uh -huh. I've never been on this portion of the river. What? Thank you for inviting me down and sharing this with me because this is a cool experience. Dude. But yeah, I uh, I had to bring the Cummins boat and put it on the river. This is the first time it's ever been on this part of the river. Oh, so. I, 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 dude, Blaze, I don't know about you, but... Like, I, I dig it. It's pretty cool. I, I, I like your little spot. Dude, this is it's awesome. awesome. Um, I, I've crossed that bridge up there at least 100 times going to California, and I've always thought, you know, it'd be so cool to be sitting on a boat floating underneath of that iron bridge. Yeah. And this is your spot. Like, yeah. you're, you're sharing it with a few people, but, yeah, this video is going to share it with the world. They're all good. You'll never be able to come back here again. You know that, right? Oh, dude, I'm cool with that. I just want to share the love with everybody. I don't care if it gets busy or not. All right, well, dude, I'm an so, old-fashioned Cummins mechanic. Yeah. And you know, for ten years, I always wanted to try to put a Cummins in a boat. Right. And everybody I talk to to get a little bit of information, they say it can't be done. It can't be done. And there's nothing that drives me more than saying it cannot be done. I started building the motor five years ago, and I put it in this boat behind me. And its first trip out, it went 25 miles an hour. It was so embarrassing. Like, <laughs> I haven't told a lot of people this story. Well, I had to put a transmission in it because the gears are so tall in the V-Drive. Okay. It wouldn't shift out of second gear. We have geared the drive for the propeller up 50% mm -hmm. over what a normally normal boat runs. Okay. So a normal boat, you'll spin one to one. One turn of the crank, one turn of the prop. That right. gives you your, your, your speed. Well, obviously... Obviously, a diesel does not spin as fast as a gas motor. Right. That's your Achilles heel. Yeah. So, I needed 100% overdrive. Well, I've got 70 because now I have an overdrive transmission. I have no torque converter. So, I have four forward gears and 50% over in my box. Now, historically, people have told me reverse with a V-Drive is useless. Do you have it in there? I do have reverse. Does it do anything? It is useless. Okay. All right. So when you put it in reverse, what happens is the boat starts to walk Yeah. and it goes sideways. Right. So you've got to know it'll only turn around one direction in reverse. Yep. And as soon as you get it going, go ahead and just put it back and forward and turn the wheel all the way the other way and pray you don't hit nobody. <laughs> what is the hull? The hull is a Tarva. Oh, yeah. They... Uh -huh. They made like a few hundred of them. They're a copy of an Eliminator. Okay. The Eliminators that were made in Desert Hills in Lake Havasu City during the 70s. Yeah. The boat's in 1979. Okay. It originally had a blown Ford 460 in it. And okay. I pulled everything out, including the Velvet Drive, and put the basically uh, 5.9 Cummins from a 97 Dodge. Right. With a 47 RE transmission, full manual valve body, electronic overdrive, no torque converter. Dude, it looks gangster. Does it roll cold? It does. We're going to see that today. It'll, it'll definitely roll some coal. All right. So the only thing I will say to you about this stretch of the river that you're about to fall in love with is a lot of rocks. So stick behind the pretty blue boat. And when we get near the cove, the cove is going to be on the left side of the river. You're going to want to come up the left side of the river. And then it's a left turn into the cove. Just shut it off and walk it in. Yeah. Because it's going to be about three feet deep. But once we get in there, magic. Yeah. The sand. We'll, we'll shut it down. Yeah. All, All right. These beautiful jet boats. <laughs> Did you see that? Someday Blaze will take his carburetors to John Moreland at CJ Engineering. And John will make them right. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put a little tune up on them because it doesn't want to idle. And I can't get the screwdriver he's got in here, but I can use my wife's necklace because that looks like a dime. I feel like, yeah, there we go. You're a genius, baby. All right, so the reason it won't idle, Blaze, is the mixture screws were only out of quarter of a turn. Gotcha. We're going to turn them all out. Give it a little more fuel. Is that what that does? Yep. 
We're gonna fatten up the idle mixture. Oh wow, this one's not out at all. So a good baseline is like one to one and a quarter turns out on the mixture screws. Gotcha. Yours were all half a turn out. That's not good. So we're gonna give it some fuel. So if you were like, if you were like turning these screws to open up the throttle blades, trying to make it idle higher, uh -huh. it wasn't. That's because you were giving it more air and it just didn't have any fuel. Gotcha. One more, Mama, and we're ready to go. All right, it's gonna start better now. Yeah. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Cause baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Everybody watch out. Watch out now. I'm ready for a good time. And I came to groove. The whole band's here and we came to move. Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. We're here all night like we got nothing to lose. Coming out the jacket cause we're turning up the heat I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat Watch out now Baby, watch out now Watch out And then when it backfired, it just stuck wide open. And I was like, oh God, I can't slow down. And I'm, oh, I, is that what that was up there? Yeah, it was just- Because I saw you shut off. It was going, I reached back and grabbed the throttle and it's not slowing down. And that was when I realized there was a big hole inside of it. And I was like, there. I was yeah. like, I need to be really straight when I shut this thing off. <laughs> So no matter what you did with your nozzle angle, it was still dragging the bow eye. So yeah. I'm wondering, are the cab plates pointing down? They could be. Yeah. Because that's why I started getting out of it because it was starting to bow steer really bad. Yeah, dude, I wonder if these cab plates are pointing down and they need to be put level or up. Yeah, whatever it was, it's not happy. It's tough to tell from here. Could be. It's tough to tell from here, but they might be. Yeah. Maybe this thing used to have a wicked porpoise and, That's you know, why they put those somebody on. put those on there, you know? Yeah. Dude, it still looks good. 
<laughs> that was a fun race, dude. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for the show. How about that smoke, huh? Dude. Love it. That thing trucks. Yeah, I, uh, to tell when got I clicked overdrive right about here somewhere, but it's slipping. It trucked. It's, uh, that's the end of my vacation. <laughs> Come to the Colorado River. Trust me. This is for all the haters on the internet and potential haters. <laughs> it's the first trip out with this boat. Homeboy probably just broke his impeller. Not his fault. And uh, it needs some adjustment. But dude, I finished the whole weekend. Made more laps than game over, dude. So you got that going for you, dude. This thing will be an animal when it's done. So congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. I have had some of the most interesting people in my days on this planet. None more interesting than Merlin Johnson. Look at that. Cummins powered Parva V Drive Day Cruiser. Hauled by Cummins Flatbed. It's an old Chevy, I think. Late 30s, early 40s. I think it's on a Dodge truck chassis. And, uh, yeah. Jet ski lift. Why not? So here's what happened to Game Over during my vacation. I had four awesome days of boating and. During those four days, I was basically cruising it around from sandbar to sandbar, cove to cove, hanging out, looking at other boats, really not caring about this one. Um, and uh, we drove it for about 50 miles. And on the last day, which was, I think, July 5th, the river's empty. There's hardly anybody there. And I have two miles of perfectly smooth, straight water in front of the house we were renting. And I decide, all right, I'm going to go make a lick. And I get out there. And instead of doing what I normally do, which is just put the boat in neutral, flat foot it, and leave my foot to the floor for five seconds, I decide, I think I'm just gonna crew a cruise it like 80 miles an hour, just keep rolling into it and just, you know, see what happens. And I've never done that. Um, and I think I was driving in a part of the EFI map that I've never driven before, because at like 80 miles an hour, at maybe like 30% throttle, it popped. And when it popped, I heard it, and I lifted off the throttle, but the boat wouldn't slow down. Because unbeknownst to me, it had split this seam right here. It had backfired and just broke it. And at that point, I have a couple of jet skis sitting in front of me and a bridge. And I have to do something I've never done before, something I never want to do, which is just kill the ignition to the motor to get it to shut off. Because with this giant air leak behind the throttle body and the O2 sensors working, it just kept running. You know, it didn't matter that I shut the throttle blades. It just kept running. So I killed the ignition at like 80 miles an hour, the boat slowed down, came to a stop, didn't hook, didn't throw me out. And um, I ended up putting my hand over the seam and idling it all the way back to the house. And I didn't even bother to fix it. We could have duct taped it. We could have siliconed a beer can over it. You know, there's a lot of things we could have do, done to fix it, but it was the last day of the trip. There was only a few hours of daylight left. So we just put it on the anchor and went boating with our friends and had the time of our lives. We'll fix it this winter. <laughs>